Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. When traveling to far-flung tropical islands to go diving, there are a few handy tips to help you be a bit more comfortable and look after yourself and your equipment when you're diving in warm climates. My first tip is to look after your feet. Um, keep them nice and clean and look after them as much as possible because it's really easy to pick up sores that can then get infected. I mean, just sand gets everywhere and then it just ends up rubbing. Uh, personally, I've stubbed my toe on a huge rock just underneath the sand when I was walking barefoot in the sand. And uh, yeah, that just makes diving in salt water with an open wound uh, a, a fresh experience. But here are a few more tips for looking after yourself and your equipment in warmer climates. Rash vests are better than t-shirts in just about every way. Rash vests are specifically made to protect you in the water, unlike a t-shirt. And as you'll notice on some of the labels, they have UPF ratings and can basically replace sunscreen so it doesn't end up in the water. But it's down to the, the weave and the material of a rash vest. Unlike a traditional t-shirt, rash vest material doesn't grin as much when it's stretched, so light doesn't actually get through as much as a traditional t-shirt. Rash vests also protect you from jellyfish stings and grazes in the water, so invest in a decent rash vest. Wear some tech shorts. You still need to bring gear with you on a dive in warm water, like your torch and DSMBs and reels and stuff, and clipping them off to a D-ring can be a bit messy and just to have flappy snag hazards all over you, but put them in some really easy to reach thigh pockets in some tech shorts that are also neoprene as well to protect your crotch from getting a bit cold and you're onto a winner. They make you much more streamlined, so you're saving energy and just look much more professional, even if you're, you know, not. You probably don't need as much lead as you think you do. If you're only sporting a rash vest, then you really don't need a whole lot of lead to actually get you down. Uh, if you haven't done a proper buoyancy check in a while where you've actually ended up taking lead off of your weight belt because it's just too much, then a good gauge is usually how much you actually have to inflate your BCD to stop yourself from sinking at the beginning of a dive. If it's any more than just a couple taps into your BCD, then you're probably wearing too much lead. But Plan yourself a proper buoyancy check with a buddy, obviously, to be sure, with empty cylinder, empty BCD, and see if you can sink, just to make sure that you're not carrying too much lead. If you can just stay under the surface, that's the perfect amount of lead, but if you're plummeting down underwater, you're just wearing too much lead. There are thermoclines hiding down there underwater. I mean, I spent a week out in the Red Sea in the summertime one year and spent all of my dives in nothing but a rash vest and board shorts because it was nice and warm. Right up until we planned to do the swim through through Elphinstone, which is down at about 50 meters and somewhere around the 40 something meters, we suddenly hit this thermocline where the water temperature just dropped a few degrees all of a sudden. If you're planning deeper dives, ask if there's going to be a thermocline where you're going so that you know to you know, dress appropriately. Protect your eyes out of the water. You are very exposed out in the water and you have both the sun bearing down on top of you as well as it glinting reflections from the water's surface. So if you spend a lot of time in warm tropical waters, do your eyes a favor and invest in a UV cut mask and on the surface get some decent sunglasses and usually a hat as well to keep the sun from bearing down on you and damaging your eyes because once they're damaged it's really uncomfortable to undamage them. Hang your wetsuit inside out between dives. If you hang your wetsuit the normal way to dry out then the outside is going to dry first great, but the inside is still soggy, damp and cold. That's The outside is not the bit that's touching your body, so flip it inside out so that the bit that actually touches your body dries first so that the next dive is much more comfortable and it's like putting on a fresh dry wetsuit each dive. 
wash your gear with fresh water before it dries. As soon as you get out of the water, it may not look like it, but your equipment is just covered in salt. And when the sea water eventually dries, it will leave this crusty salt deposit in all the corners and crevices of your equipment, as well as the, the materials it gets into the material of your gear. So give it a good rinse in fresh water as soon as you can, as soon as you get out of the water to get rid of much of that salt as you can. And when you then get home, give it another good scrub because it, salt just gets everywhere. Hydrate more than you actually want to. You cannot drink enough water when you're scuba diving in warm climates. Fresh water, obviously, you don't drink seawater, but it's really easy to become dehydrated and forget to drink enough water. You've got the cooling effect of the ocean water can often make you forget that you're in a really warm country and become a bit complacent and you almost feel hydrated when you're really not. So do your best to have like a large water bottle that you can see how much you're drinking throughout the day. And if you haven't drunk it all, just try and force yourself to, to drink it all. Your chances of being stung by something are a lot higher in tropical climates. When your arms and legs are exposed because you're wearing short sleeves for the tan lines, be extra careful about brushing up against things because a lot of corals sting like jellyfish and those stings can sometimes last for weeks and in some rare cases, you actually need to surgically remove parts of the sting. So yeah, I know your tan lines will suck, but it's far better that than just annoying stings. Be prepared for random stings in the water, even out in the open blue water from things like stinging planktons and stuff. They like the really sensitive skin like your inner thigh and over your lips as well. So if you feel it, just don't, don't freak out too much. It's kind of normal, it does happen, but be prepared for it. Don't leave your gear to dry in the sun. The sun can really damage parts of your equipment and cause others to discolor, harden, denature, all sorts of nasty things. So hang up your gear somewhere nice and shady with a decent breeze so it can dry properly, but try to keep it out of direct sunlight if you can help it. That UV light can cause O-rings to um, and seals to age prematurely so they start to disintegrate. Uh, clear mask skirts, they go nasty, they sometimes can harden, discolor. Uh, your gear ages prematurely so that really nice shiny black BCD that you just got is just a brown color after a few seasons try try to keep your stuff out of the sun if it can be avoided and that's it for another week uh, if you have any handy tips that you've come across uh, like bringing clips or clothes pegs to dry towels and clothing on the side of the rails of a boat uh, then of course let everybody know down in the comments below and then head over to simplyscuba.com thank you for watching everybody and of course save diving